Let the church say amen. 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 Amen again. Amen. 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 Something about the name Jesus. Something about it. It's the sweetest thing. Yes. Now, you know, there's much I could say. That's for those that love him. Yes. Let us bow in a word of prayer. I'm not going to be long today. Yes, Lord. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we just yes. thank you. Yes. Glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. And Lord, we know you are here. Yes. Thank you, Amen. We thank you for yesterday. Just fellowshipping and break, breaking bread and just enjoying the bounty of what you have allowed us to have and sharing it with everybody that would walk up. Some folks came back twice and they still got blessed. But we know that's because you have been so good to us. Better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. You have kept us. Lord, we stand here humbly realizing that without you, none of it would have been possible. And because of you, all things are possible. Now, Lord, we ask that you would just let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight because thou art my strength and my redeemer. Love you, praise you. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, now then. Lord, let me get that out of my system. <laughs> Since he put it in there, let me. Amen. Love the Lord. <laughs> Well, if you don't love him, then that's because you don't know him. And if you know him, you can't help but love him, huh? Amen. You, amen. You know it. You know it. If you have your Bibles, let's, let's go quickly to the, to the book of Psalms, 37th chapter. 37. We're going to read, hold up the first 10 verses. Amen. 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 It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked device to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet for a little while, and then the wicked shall not be, yea, those shall Diligently, thou shalt diligently consider this place, and it shall not be. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, understanding of his holy and most righteous word. We want to use for a thought today a Christian response to evil and wickedness. A Christian response. Just by that title, it tells you not a personal response. Not, you know, not an uh, individual response, but... A Christian, which, in, uh, which implies a spiritual response. Give me a second, we'll get it together. So when we look around, we see in this world, probably what David, who is the author of this psalm, said and saw, the wickedness and, and evilness of that time. 
wickedness in high places. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And we look around today, and of course, you've been, if you saw a little bit of CNN, you know what's going on. Yeah. Amen. And that is that they're now going from January 6th, they've been tracing it on back. And, 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 and all those who stood and lied straight, now they're starting to crack a little bit and tell the truth. The Lord is touching hearts and convicting them. And they realize, I don't want to be a part or identify with this great, great mistake, this great historical embarrassment that they have placed on the United States of America. You understand? As if America didn't have enough to be embarrassed about. But yet we find in this 20, in this 37th Psalm, David speaking to those times, to those who would follow. And he says to them, fret not yourself. The word fret implies worry. And some of us have been worried. Folks are now worrying whether or not Trump will get back in. You know, I don't worry, but folks do worry. I can understand why. Because <laughs> if you put a crazy person back in, you're going to get some crazy things happening. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Y'all know y'all gonna put this on the internet. On the internet. <laughs> if I come in with some guards, you know why. <laughs> I ain't worried about it. Because God's got me. Amen. You know, God's got us all. And, 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 and what we find in this, this uh, scripture, scriptural neighborhood, is that David is reminding us, don't worry about what you see and hear that's going on, because we see a lot that is going on that's not right. Yeah. But then the other part of that is, if he knew human nature, yeah. so don't be envious right. of what you see going on. Yeah. Now, that's particularly important. Yeah. Because we, as followers of Christ, we live in this world. And I heard the Sunday school lesson, some of it. Of course, this world now is inundated with a lot of stuff that we didn't have to deal with when we were young. You understand? We, it is, ain't nothing like what's going on now. I wish I had a witness. Man, and that, just in that phone alone, I wish I had a witness. And I know everybody's trying to give kids a phone. In that phone alone, Satan has enough wicked thoughts and, and pictures, hello, to contaminate you know, all of mankind. Just in a, just, I wish I had a witness. Now I know it for communication's sake. Now stop and think for a second. Somebody mentioned, I think I was on IU's campus, but, Couple years, we drove on the campus. Now this is a place of high. Everybody, nobody was looking up. <laughs> See if a car was coming, and then it, everybody was walking like this. Yes, well, this is the time we live in. Right. That they're preoccupied with what about with this, but what about common sense? And, I, <laughs> and we couldn't get on the phone too much. Y'all remember coming after high school? We, your mother gonna let you sit on the phone and talk or look up. Uh, Get in the closet and do yearns. I wish I had a witness. Uh, and now they can't do nothing but that. That's the world that exists now. And in it, you can see the, 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 the bling bling, the shows that have such beautiful black women with the nastiest mouths, ready to fuss and fight and do all kind of stuff. And they somebody's mama, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Wait a minute, we've come into that? So when I heard somebody mention holiness, well, let's put it in perspective so we won't forget. Holiness is what it really means is living the way God has called you to live. Now that's what it means. It don't, excuse the expression, it don't mean fronting for God. No. It don't mean that. It don't mean being, you know, all self-righteous. Right. Amen. But these are the times we live in, and in the midst of that, we have folks who know the Lord but desire what they see with their naked eye out there in the world. They want the, the bling bling. They want all of that. 
So what David was saying is don't you be envious and not considering how folks got it. Because see, every thief is not somebody who breaks in a house. With the stroke of a pen, with the stroke of a pen, they can steal your stuff. Amen. Amen. You got to watch it. Well, if, you, if God is on your side, he's watching it for you. But that's the kind of world we live in, but yet we desire what looks like. You can have a big mansion, but that a house is not a home. I think somebody wrote a song about that, didn't it? Hey, Amen. So having a house, but that don't mean you got a home. And you can have a little shack with, with, with nothing but kids on top of each other, and you got love, and you got a home. He said, don't be envious of what you see them doing. And as I said before, you got movies that highlight crooks, thieves, you understand? And every now and then you want them to get away because you want them to get back at the system. But wrong is wrong. <laughs> and sometimes you think, well, what could I do with all that money? Well, what you could do with all that money is kill yourself. <laughs> You can drink yourself to death. You can overindulge yourself to death. That easy living is not all that easy. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't have risk for killing themselves. Why is it that the young folks, are the, that the parents are rich, and they're always killing themselves? Why is it that the movie stars and the entertainers are killing themselves? They got everything they want, but guess what? They don't have what they need. If you don't have a relationship with God, you ain't got what you need. And what you want, after a while, you ain't going to want it. Because it can't give you what you need. You are designed in the image and likeness of the almighty God. And you need spiritual. Not just spiritual nourishment, but a spiritual relationship. You show a child that doesn't want to be with his mother. Naturally, instinctively. And even with the father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mothers, you got to edge because you carried them and fed them when they, before they even got here. Yeah. But there's an instinct in that child also for the father. Uh -huh. I wish I had a witness. Yeah. God put that there. Yeah. And so it is, as spiritual beings, we have the same desire Come on. for yeah. God. Yeah. But the world put so much in it, yeah. just like it did back then, yeah. that the first thing David says to them is don't get caught up in the world. Don't be afraid and worry about what the world is doing. Did he not say this? He said, when I was young. Huh? When I was young. And now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Oh, seed begging bread. Because God's got it. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So even though when it's down, when you have your period, and we all go through where everything ain't the way you want it. Yes, right. Amen. Sometimes the bank account gets so low. I wish I had a witness. You, you had some a while back, and now it's got. I wish I had a witness. Don't fret about it. And don't think about if I was like so-and-so, riding good and looking. Uh-uh. You don't know why. They may be riding good, but they may not be feeling good. And they may not be thinking good. You thank God for what you got. Amen. If you got a Cadillac, so be it. If you got a hoopty, so be it. Amen. Be thankful. And every now and then, I think you need to park the car and ride the bus one time. Get appreciation. You're going to see more. Hello. And you're going to feel more. And you're going to appreciate when you get in that car. Oh, I wish I had a witness. You see what he's telling us in the word of God. The psalmist, David is that first and foremost, we can't worry about the world and what they got and what they're doing. Give you a few points here and I'm going to step, step down. David's the writer of the 37th Psalm. And the first thing he told us coming out of the gate was don't fret over what you see the world doing. Amen. Second, he lets us know that we must trust in the Lord for what we need. And that's the, the danger that a lot of us get. We won't, when it gets real tight, yeah. and it gets real tough, yeah. 
we start to think of ways that we can do it ourselves. Come on now. I wish I had a word. You know, I mean, that's what happened with Abraham. You understand with Sarah. <laughs> when Sarah came and said, listen, I can't bear you one, but she can. Yeah. Of course, he didn't have no problem with that. <laughs> Nowhere does it say he objected and said, no. That's not. He went on and found out that was not the child of promise. God is true to his word. And to show them, you know how old Sarah was. She was past, way, way past the time of being able to bear a child. And Abra Abraham was past the time of being able to make a child. I wish he had a witness. But boy, when the Lord decides something's going to happen. Amen. I can only imagine. I can just imagine, brothers, that that, that gleam came into Abraham's eye. <laughs> And Sarah saw that gleam, and God took care of the rest. Yes. Amen. 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 I wish I had it. All things are possible. So when you're in your tightest situation, yes. amen, don't look to the world and be envious of what you think they got. Right. Wait on the Lord, because he's got something for you. And he gives you what you need. Sometimes what we want will get us in trouble. Anybody know about that? Sometimes you want it. Well, guess what? When you get it, you wish you had not. But when God gets it, it's, it fits you perfectly. It don't cause any trouble. It don't mess up anything. It gets you in a better position to receive the next blessing. I wish I had a witness. Came down through that line yesterday. And they started potato salad green. Uh, uh, baked beans, uh, green beans. It kept going powder. It got down there and they said, what kind of meat you want? I thought we might have one good one. You understand? Said you want some ham, I mean, some, you want some uh, chicken, you want some, some ribs, you want a hot dog in that plate. Now, I'm, I'm saying tell them a little. And they said, and they give me a little, all right, but a little, a bunch of little adds up to a lot. Boy, my eyes were that big. God is like that. Amen. He wants to pour it on and bless you with not just what you like. Amen. But what's good for you, too. Those are green beans. You understand? On top of it. Amen. And then say, get what you want to drink. I wish you had a witness. You don't have to want for nothing. Whatever the world got, they can keep. I want what God's got for you. Amen. I want what God has for me. Because what he's got for me, got for me is going to be just right. Yes, sir. Amen. It's going to be what I need. Yes, I wish I had a witness. Yes, so we have to trust him. And even when it looks bad. And I've been there. I know some of you have been there. I've been in some tight situations. I've told you. Some situations look like, boy, this is not going to go. And guess what the Lord makes a way out of no way. Amen. I can imagine when he pulled back the Red Sea. Can you imagine the doubters? <laughs> they were going along, but man, they get, God didn't make a way. Huh? Huh? Ah, listen. God will make a way. And you will know it's God. You ain't going to say it so, so you'll know it's God. Because he specializes in dealing with those tough situations that have you worrying and fretting. And, and wish you were somebody that you don't need to be. I wish you had a witness. Amen. I'm glad that I am who I am. I only had one. I used to say, well, you know, being ball players, I said, I watched Kareem come on the scene. I said, I wish I was. The Lord said, forget it. <laughs> I got a plan for you. Amen. You won't have to throw a sky hook. Amen. But I got something for you. And I thank God for it. Amen. I stopped wishing I was... Seven feet tall. <laughs> them guys have some problems, you know. Them knees are seven feet tall. When, it, when it's over, you got something to work. They have to put two beds together in the, in the hotel. Just so they can, you understand, they got to put their head down and go in. And, and I walk in and jump in the bed, you understand. I'm thankful. He wanted me to be this size. I don't know whether Tony would have wanted a seven footer, but you got to. Five, nine, and three-fourth brother. <laughs> Amen. From Christmas at his high school. Our God is good. Our God is good. 
Number three, he gives us this warning too. We come down in verse eight and nine. He says, we must cease from anger and forsake wrath. Now that's an important piece. I was reading an article where a secretary had been abused by her boss. You know, so long, all kind of stuff, and she was tired of it. Talked about her wrath or different things. And she came with a weapon. She's gonna hurt him on the job. Of course, you know, that had been the end of her career. But she was fed up. She was tired. And we as human beings get fed up. And we get tired, especially of taking stuff. I had a deacon once come out of Louisiana. And he was a mild-mannered guy for the most part, but you gotta watch mild-mannered guys, because they can, when they have enough, they can, they can crack. And he was working for Cap, and this white guy kept harassing him, kept messing with him. And he needed the job, so he, he took it, but in my study, we were talking about it, and he broke down and, and basically cried. And he was older than I was, but he had to get all that anger yes. and that, that wrath in him out. He had dealt with racism and white folks messing with him since he was little. And I'm glad that he got it out. Because had he not got it out, that white man that would kept messing with him on the job was going to get something that he wished he never had. We can't be mad at the world and let that build up in us. The example we have in that that's so important is none other than Martin Luther King. Now, you know, I'm, I grew up in the era of, of black power. You know, historically, Carmichael and Huey P. Newton, or Black Panthers, all that. And there were those who didn't agree with nonviolence. You understand? And, and, and we're living in a violent time now. And there were those who wanted to shoot it out, wanted to get their, their rights that way. Well, we're kind of outnumbered in this country, uh, gun-wise and otherwise. The Lord had put on Martin's them heart not to deal with anger and violence, but to do nonviolence. Nonviolence. Now, some of us have trouble. It's not easy. Somebody come and smack you and spit on you and mess with your kids, and your reaction is to give them something that they won't ever forget. That's what they endured down there during the civil rights. We're going to Alabama. That's what they endured. Only God could help them refrain from that, and the world saw that, and they changed the United States of America. With nonviolence. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Sometimes you cannot be the one that wants to give violence for violence. And that's not easy. It's going to take a relationship with God to help you handle that one. I'll be honest. It ain't easy. I told you about the 6'8 the guy. Amen. What I, what, I, what, I, what I told him scared him to death because I meant what I said about what I would do to him. He put his hand. Guy's 6'8". But God called me out of this life. Hallelujah. And when he saw me, I wasn't the same guy. I didn't have violence in my heart. I didn't have hatred toward him in my heart. Even though he cost me a ton of money and a ton of pain. I had a new wife, amen, and a new baby, Tiffany. I was living a good life. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. Amen, I wish I had a witness. God would turn your nature around. So you won't do evil for evil. There are a lot of folks locked up today say, yeah, I got them. Well, you got them and they got you. And they're going to have you for 20 years or 15 years or 10 years, whatever. I don't want a day in lockup. You understand? Amen. I don't want nobody to tell me when I can get up and when I can go to bed. And yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, I want the freedom that comes with a God that loves me, that when I'm obedient to him, he blesses me. And so we find that, that David is telling them. And David was a man of war. He was a man of war. But sometimes our nature, amen, the farther away from God, the easier it is to get back into your own nature. And I talked to the preacher yesterday, and he reminded me, 
He had been away. He said, I started slipping a little bit in so many words. Because when you get away from God, you get away from praying, you get away from being around God, the world kind of numbs you to certain things. And before you know it, you start acting like the world. The world will always justify itself. But the key is to get you to go along with the justification. But you are supposed to be a peculiar people. He didn't call you out. He didn't put his hand on you. His anointing is upon your life. As long as you stay close and receive that anointing, you'll get the strength you need to say, uh-uh, not me. Amen. I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to pray about that. I'm not going home and get the gun. I'm not going to pull out the knife. I'm not going to cuss somebody out. I wish I had a witness. I'm not going to get out of Christian character. I've got a Christian response to that. Amen. And that is to pray about it and to step away. Of course, I'll tell you what I tell the kids. Don't let anybody put their hands on you. You can get them out, get their hand, take their hands off of you in a, in a loving way, so to speak. Amen. Because God has not called you just to be hurt. I wish I had a witness. Amen. But that's the reality. What is he telling us today? He's telling us that we have to have a Christian response to all the things out there in the world, amen, that will draw us away from God and get us out of our Christian character. Because the world looks to us to see how to behave, whether it's in a storm, amen, whether it's in a violent situation, amen. But the moment that we get away from God, well, we can, we can be a monster. And I'm telling you, we are here today. Amen. Thank God because he loved us so much. Amen. That's why we're here. We were able to enjoy ourselves yesterday. Yes. We didn't have one incident. Lord. Amen. Wasn't no shooting. Praise Wasn't no fighting. Jesus. Kids were playing. Yes. Folks were sitting around laughing and talking. I reminded the kids, I said, did you see anybody on their cell phones talking? And that? Oh, people had to make a few calls. But everybody was talking and laughing and looking at each other. That's the way he created us to be. We are personable people. We're supposed to be. And if God's people can't do that, then there ain't no hope for the world. Huh? If we can't break bread together in fellowship and love one another and respect one another and enjoy each other, yeah, he said, by this will men know you what? My disciples, if you what? Love one another. Amen. Amen. So when I heard that, Stay safe. <laughs> Amen. From a young person, you understand? Amen. That's all I needed. <laughs> Let me know God's got his eye on me. Amen. Because in this world, we don't know what tomorrow brings. Amen. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Y'all know it was Black Expo weekend, right? Well, we forgot. Somebody forgot to tell them this is first church weekend, too. <laughs> Amen. Give God some praise. I don't know about their picnic. I don't know about, but we had a good time yesterday. Amen. We had a good time yesterday. And did it on time. It was over by 5 o'clock. But it seemed like we'd been out there for 10 hours. Amen. Isn't that right? We had a good, that's how it is. Amen. It wasn't King's Island out there. It looked like it a little bit, but it wasn't. <laughs> Amen. It was God's people on God's property. Yes, Amen. Right. Breaking bread and loving each other. Yes, and I thank God for you. I was proud of you. Yes. You know, I told her, Janet, and she gone. We sit and talked yesterday, <clears throat> and I told her there's no other place yes. that God wanted me to be yes. than right here with you. Amen. I wasn't looking for a place. You understand? But God said, I want you here. I told her maybe it's because he knew I liked to eat. I don't know. <laughs> but that wasn't it. Amen. He knew I needed to be around some of his best people. Amen. I need to be around people who love the Lord. Amen. Some people who believe in holiness. Amen. And that's the evolutionary process. That's what we want everybody to know. Yeah, we're not going to stop trying to live the life that God's called us to live. Amen. Amen. But if you get close enough, if you hang around a little bit, I wish I had a witness, you'll start to understand why we choose to be this way. 
because there is no better way. He said, I'm holy. He said, what? You be holy. Amen. Amen. But he didn't say you have to stand off from people. Right. Amen. He didn't say you had to look down at people. Right. He didn't say you had to condemn people. Right. He said, hey, listen, if I be lifted up, draw. I'll draw. I'll draw. <laughs> he said, let your light so shine. They'll see me. Put a smile on your face because I'm blessing you and taking care of you. All you have to do is be who I've called you to be and the rest will take care. And in the meantime, I got some blessings that you ain't even thought about. Amen. 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 And he's shown me that, and I'm thankful for that. Yes. To the young folks, don't get too far away from God. Right. <clears throat> Amen. The world will try to pull you. Yes, don't get too far away. And I'll tell you this. Don't, don't hang around with folks who don't respect the Lord. Right. They may not go, but they got least respect. Right. Yes. Because when you get around somebody who doesn't respect God, that's dangerous. Yes, Amen. I wish I had a witness. Yes, they can have an effect on you like you're supposed to have an effect on them. Yes, Listen carefully. Yes, there are a lot of guys I knew in the street. Guess what? I left them in the street. They see me today. We still cool. We still tight. Hey, right on, Brother Black. You understand what I'm saying? But guess what? I walk this way. You can walk your way. I'm walking this way because God has ordered my steps. Amen. Where he leads me, he provides for me. He takes care of me. He's my shelter. He's everything I need. I can't go with you because I got to do good with God. Young folks, stay close to God. Stay close to God. And guess what? He'll bless you in ways that you can't count. We have to have a Christian response to this crazy world. And we cannot be envious of what they have and what they got. They can look good for a moment. We have no idea what they're really dealing with. Right. Yes. Amen. 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 We have no idea. Be thankful for what he's got, yes. what he's given you. Yes. Amen. And realize that he's not through blessing you. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. And this church here, I told you, you haven't seen anything yet. Yes. You keep on the path of loving, blessing, and sharing, and, and, and having unity in your body. Yes. Amen. Amen. Like I say, you can disagree, just don't be disagreeable. Amen. Go ahead and, work and watch God. Watch God. Bless you. Bless your house. Bless his house. Bless your children's house. I wish you had a witness. The Lord is not short, short of blessings. And that's our close. He said, anyway, bless me. Anyway, bless me. I'll be all right. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. God bless you. Come to our feet. Doors of the church are open.